Yes, we have a controversy around the newly unveiled all-electric Ford F-150 as one of world's biggest YouTubers suggested Ford underestimated its range, but whose math is off? Well, I will dust up my high school calculator and Inside EVs and Forbes contributor Tom Malogny will be here to show me how to use it. Toyota unveiled its new electric crossover in the United States while still making a case how nobody really wants it. BMW has finally unveiled the pricing of not one, but two electric vehicles going on sale in the US very soon. Ford Mustang Mach-E outsells everyone in a crucial market and Remots names its production-ready insane hypercar, while one of its potential buyers calls cops on himself after taking it for a spin. All of this is coming up next. Ooh, welcome to E4 Electric. If you are interested in everything that's going on in the amazing world of electric cars, you came to the right place. Well, all you have to do now is click on that subscribe button and the bell notification icon so you don't miss anything moving forward. Let's move on to our top story. And we've got a pretty interesting dilemma between Ford and one of the biggest YouTubers in the world. And for once, I actually think it's a good thing. As you probably know, Ford has made a big statement a couple of weeks ago by following up the Mustang Mach-E, which by the way, in May, was the most sold electric car in Norway, the ground zero for electric cars. Well, they followed it up with the all-electric F-150. And the reviews were great from pretty much everybody except for, well, me. I thought the range was kind of weak. But as soon as I posted the video, I started getting, Alex, you're wrong comment and normally i am very much used to reading negative comments i enjoy reading them actually like this one where someone's claiming uh, that i sound like i'm talking on my cell phone while taking a dump and constipated <laughs> But these comments were genuinely trying to tell me that I possibly missed an important fact. And I do take that seriously because besides the toilet humor, I do pride myself in bringing you guys accurate information. Now, the comments were pointing to the video by Marquez Brown Lee, one of the biggest tech YouTubers in the world, who is very much widely respected. And in that video, he said this. But that 300 mile range is the EPA estimated rating with a thousand pounds of cargo in the trunk. Now, this was a big surprise because his comments sounded like they came directly from Ford and comments on my video also sounded that they were convinced that this is an official word from Ford. So I decided to do one of those uh, fact checking things that all the cool kids are talking about. And I reached out to Ford because even though big YouTubers like Marquez do get better and faster access to the vehicles, they rarely get the exclusive information especially if it's very different from the press release now ford told me that their numbers are epa estimates and epa range is never calculated with any load per standard procedure so in other words they have carefully refused to confirm marcus's claims so i dug a little further and what i found was this business insider interview with darren palmer who is Ford's head of electric vehicles, where he did mention that very fact. However, this was the only time I was able to find anybody at Ford making this statement. And I had an on and off camera conversation with Darren a few days before launch. You're looking at it right now. And he did not mention that at all, even though we did talk about the range. So why would Ford admit that information from their press release, the unveiling and the majority of the press interviews? I don't know. But there was another thing that Marquez mentioned in his video that made me raise my well-groomed eyebrows even further. What he suggested that without the load, based on the estimated range number he saw in the instrumental panel of the truck, he calculated that the truck would have a range of 459 miles. Now, here's where I did not need to check with Ford. All I had to do was to dig up my high school physics class notes back in... Uh, it's been a while. 1,000 pounds is about 15% of the total truck's weight and 15% drop in weight will not produce over 50% increase in range. So where Marquez went wrong, he was basing his calculations 
on the number that you saw on the range estimator screen. Now, the range estimators usually estimate your range based on the last day or a certain number of miles of driving. So if this truck was driven downhill or at a lower speed with a lot of regen before Marquez got it, the estimated range would go up way above real worlds and EPAs. Now, this is not uncommon, but it is unrealistic. Again, 15% reduction in weight will not get you over 50% gain in range. But Marquez is huge, so what he said was louder than what Ford said in their press release or the unveiling, so Ford may just have no choice but to adjust and make some improvements over the next year before the production, which is possible. Now, I think this is good for Ford anyway, because I have a feeling that when GM comes out with their electric truck, the electric Silverado, they will promise the 400 mile range. So if you think about it, Marquez kind of did a favor to Ford. Anyway, for more, we turn to the Inside EVs and Forbes contributor who owns both an electric car and a big truck, Tom Malogny. But before that, a big announcement that we have a new sponsor. And as you guys know, I am a happy ID4 owner. So that only made sense that Volkswagen would partially sponsor this channel. So I'm excited to let you know that this video is brought to you by the Volkswagen ID4, which as I mentioned, I am a proud owner of. One of my favorite features is the enhanced voice command system. I can do a lot of things in my car using my voice, including opening the shade of the beautiful panoramic optional roof without taking my hands off the wheel. See if you love the ID4 as much as I do by exploring the link in the description of this video. All right, Tom. Well, listen, Marquez Brownlee is pretty much number one or definitely top three tech YouTubers, very respected. Um, how could he make this, uh, you know, actually a couple of mistakes? What do you think went wrong? Well, you know, he's not an electric vehicle expert. He's a great tech guy, you know, and knows, knows what he's talking about. But, you know, when it comes to electric vehicles, especially, you know, range estimators, we know very well that you can't really rely on that, especially a pre-production vehicle like this is a real early prototype. You know, I, I, I wouldn't bank on what that estimate is saying. Okay, so that does excuse it just a bit. But the other thing where he essentially suggested that a truck or really any vehicle can add 159 miles when you you know take about a, a a thousand pounds off of the vehicle, how close to that truth that is? So you know, as we all know, weight does have an effect on range, uh, but it's not as much as most people would assume. Uh, you, you know, your weight affects you a lot more when you're doing stop and go driving. Once you're out on the highway driving 70 miles an hour or whatever you know, and, and, and you've already, you know, expanded that energy to get moving, it doesn't affect the range that much. What really affects the range of a pickup truck will be towing because the trailer is going to have a tremendous amount of aero drag. So if he, um, if you just put a thousand pounds in the back of your pickup truck versus putting a thousand pounds in a big box square trailer, you, you'd have a lot bigger of an effect when you're trailering than you would just by putting a thousand pounds in the back of the pickup truck that that's it's going to have an effect but nowhere's near 156 miles or so all right now so what does ford do now now even though he's an independent youtuber he did his report he made a couple of mistakes but you know the audience the community believes that that's the official word from ford and uh what do they do now do they try to adjust and actually make that happen since there's you know, plenty of time to make some progress with that? Yeah, I don't think that Ford is going to react to uh, his video and now all of a sudden find another 100 miles of range, Alex. The vehicle, you know, is, is, is going to get delivered as they had planned it would be. Maybe we'll be surprised and it'll, it'll come in at uh, more than 300 miles of range. Um, but I don't, I don't expect it to be say 456 or 59, whatever he said the range estimator was going to be. I, I think, um, if the range was going to be that great, Ford would have give us a little bit of a hint that it was going to be, you know, in excess of 400 miles, let's say. So while we might get a little bit more, 
I'd be shocked if uh, we got like 50% more range uh, once this thing is uh, EPA range rated over the, the 300 mile estimate that Ford told us it was going to come in at. Now, the interesting thing is, is one of the things uh, that people absolutely loved about the truck was the front, right? That a lot of space. At the same time, you can argue that if the frunk uh, was a little bit more aerodynamic and therefore have given a little bit of more range to the truck, it would be as big. So that begs the question, and this is where I'm wondering where you would think, because you are an electric a car guy, uh, you drive the Model 3, but you also have a, a pickup truck. Um, what's more important to truck drivers? Is it the range or is it the space? Well, I don't think there's, you can answer that for all truck drivers. I think overall the utility of the truck is going to be the most important thing, uh, what it can haul, what it can hold. So I think giving it that huge frunk um, with all those power outlets is enormously important. So I would take that over, say, making some kind of real funky front end that added an extra 10 or 15 miles of range. I, you know, I, I wouldn't go that way. I, I think they did it right. I love that huge, large frunk and I think that contractors and people that that buy this pickup truck are going to really appreciate it. Now I think a lot of people would agree uh, that the range is not the, the the best that can you know that, that that an electric pickup truck could have. At the, on the other hand you know I hear a lot of people saying listen nobody tows that much stuff behind these trucks or even put anything in the bed. Most people you know use it recreational. Could it be that the first year or two when, when Ford is still ramping up for the production, people who will be buying them because they don't need that much range are the people who using will be using this truck without any load, without any, any trailer, so the range would be more than perfect for them? Well, we could talk about this all day. You know, a lot of people buy pickup trucks and drive them as cars. You know, they go to the supermarket, whatever, eight miles from their house and buy a bag of groceries. The, this truck doesn't have to do everything for everybody. It will serve the purpose of many contractors. I have a friend that owns a, a, a carpentry business. This would be perfect for him for hauling wood around. He rarely drives more than 50, 60 miles. He could load it up as much as he wanted, even pull a trailer. So there's going to be people that use a truck like a truck, like a contractor that hauls things, that this will work fine for. It won't work for some people. But it will work for some contractors and for people that use their pickup trucks like cars. And we know America, we love pickup trucks. It will work for nearly all of those people. So, you know, I, I think that we shouldn't try to worry about making the, the F-150 Lightning be the perfect truck for everybody. It's going to sell as many copies as Ford can make because it's, it's going to appeal to a wide enough market as it, at its launch. Maybe in three or four years. You know, with battery technology improvements, it'll be a five, 600 mile truck, and then it'll open up for even more use cases. As always, if you want to see more of Tom, all you have to do is subscribe to his YouTube channel. That's right. He's got one of those as well. And I put a link to it in the description of this video. Let's move on to the next story. And Toyota debuts its recently unveiled electric vehicle here in the United States. And since the unveiling didn't really unveil, any real specs i figured the u.s premiere would have some but i was wrong i guess they just announced that the shipping container has arrived here in the u.s and they're going home for the day even though sales are to begin next year we really know nothing about the car except that toyota doesn't really want to produce evs and that it will have a yoke. In one of the statements from Toyota executives this week, once again, they have suggested their strategy on EVs is driven by lack of demand. And by demand, I'm assuming they mean this sense of reality. But don't worry, I have a fix. In my next interview with our monthly contributor, Sandy Monroe, I will be making him the Toyota CEO for a day to see what he would do to catch up to Tesla. So. Don't forget to subscribe and that way you won't miss it. Now let's go back to Ford because last month, the month of May, the Mustang Mach-E became the top selling electric vehicle in Norway. As you probably know, Norway is ground zero for electric cars where more people buy electric than gas cars. And I'm not rooting for any particular EV, but I think it's great that we now have real choices that people are genuinely excited about. 
with the Mustang Mach-E, the ID4, the Model 3 and Y and in Europe ever popular Renault Zoe with both Neo and Xpeng Motors launching their sales there this year. And another very interesting news came out this week. It appears that Ford made more electric Mustangs than the gas version of their Mustang this year and a lot of it is due to the chip shortage but at the same time it was their choice and it's great to see that they have chosen to channel their resources to the electric version. BMW is finally bringing not one but two all-electric vehicles to the United States, the iX and i4. First BMW electric cars since 2014 when they have gifted us the marble of technology and flawless design in the i3 which for some reason is still being made and sold. And yes, both models will have the matching front end grills or as I call them with a more professional term, uh, the monkey butt fronts. And this week BMW has unveiled the pricing for the US market with the iX starting at a little over $83,000 and the i4 will start at $55,400 with the M50 performance version at $65,900. Both will have up to 300 miles of estimated EPA range 200 kilowatt fast charging rate and both will start deliveries in the first quarter of the next year here in the United States. Three years after its debut, Remats is finally unveiling the production version of its hypercar Concept 2 and they're now calling it Nevera. Oh, car baby names are so cute. It was unveiled in what I'm assuming was my grandmother's vegetable greenhouse and it still has amazing specs. 120 kilowatt hour battery, over 1900 horsepower, 0 to 60 in 1.85 seconds with top speed of 258 miles. Only 150 will be made with a starting price of 2.4 million dollars. That's right, that is the starting price you know, for those of you who are bargain hunters. Of course, there are other exciting electric hypercars that are coming on the market soon, like the Lotus Avaya or Pininfarina Batista, so things are getting really exciting. But none of that news was as exciting as the video of a potential customer test driving the car at almost 90 miles an hour on a pretty narrow road that was posted on social media. The CEO of Rimats, Mate Rimats, said that after the joyride, the driver called police on himself, which means that there is a good chance that he will be making his own license plate before taking the delivery of his Nevera. Don't forget to become a premium member of this channel so you have access to all of the bonus materials and you get to support an independent journalist. All right, looking forward to all of your comments. Other than that, see you guys next time and remember to stay charged.